Steve asked me to do a talk on helming, which is quite a broad subject really, uh, and I'm happy to obviously cover anything you want to or, or try and have some questions. But I thought perhaps what might be quite useful to narrow it down a bit is to talk about the first beat and you know, some of the priorities and some of the thinking that we go on on the first beat. That obviously is quite a uh, essential part of the race. If you can get up to run with Mark in a good place, and you stand every chance of being able to hold that or capitalise on it in the race. Um, I think there's some other talks that are going to cover starting. So I'm going to leave that to one side, and I'm not going to talk too much about pre-start, and um, things that, that I hope will not be covered in the, in the starting talk as well. So I'm going to kind of pick it up where the start, start all goes. Um, so it's just gone, and we're, we're just trucking away from the line. And I'm going to take it right up to the, the windward mark, and as we go, we go around the windward mark. Um, and then, you know, afterwards, I will just, just ask questions as we go, really, or uh, any other bits we want to cover, we'll be trying to touch on later. Um, I'm not quite sure how long it's going to take, but uh, just push through. Um, and I'm kind of talking from my perspective as to, to what my priorities are when I'm sailing, but also, um, Oh, no, this is my favourite sailing book actually, Mark Russell's ROA Tactics. It's a really good book and I definitely recommend reading it. Um, it's got loads of good stuff in here about uh, managing risk and positioning with, with relation to the fleet and um, how to know whether it's lips and headers and things like that. So I would really recommend this. It's actually not, not very expensive either. I'm not saying it's to say that. It's just that I'm going to nick a lot of things from his book in, in this talk. Um, so the first thing, start on goes. Uh, and let's imagine us in a position where we've had quite a good start uh, and we're, we're trucking away pretty much in parallel. Imagination required. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, cover the, we'll cover the plan B in a minute. So we've had quite a good start and we're trucking away um, the boat's either side of us. And the first priority for the helm really is boat speed. Uh, and that, that has several things really. Firstly, clear air. And we need to understand what is dirty air and how do we get dirty air to know what we're clear air. And the two boats that you're most worried about, really, is the boat to leeward and the boat to windward. <coughs> and I think that people probably get a bit uh, overly worried about the boat to windward and forget the much greater danger, which is the boat to leeward. Uh, and I say that because, if you, think, if you sort of think simply, uh, you'll, you'll have dirty air from either boat if they're in an advanced position from you. But just the way that you start, if I do this in reverse, you, kind of, you don't start both facing forwards all in a parallel line, you start in a sort of skewed position. So this is you as the one with boat, and this is the lured boat. You can imagine there's another one with boat up, uh, over your right shoulder. This boat to lured has already got a head start on you effectively, particularly as you go around with a, a, gate, a gate boat. But this is the one that you need to be particularly worried about. The closer you are to that boat, the much greater danger you are. And that first 30 seconds, really all about your positioning in relation to these boats, particularly this lured boat, you don't want to get too close to them. And if you can keep it quite tight and high, you're sailing, keep away from that lured boat, you stand a much greater chance of not being ejected out to the back. So it's a really big priority uh, and something that you need to concentrate on. Now obviously just being aware of that isn't going to be sufficient to, to stop you being chucked out the back, because there's other things you need to be thinking about. Um, you need to be thinking about keeping the boat level. I mean, if you're going to hike, the first 30 seconds are the time to do it. Uh, and it's, it's absolutely full on flat hiking uh, for those first 30 seconds, just to try and get your bow ahead of the two boats around you. It will start to open up opportunities for you once we get to 30 seconds. Also, taking the waves is pretty critical at this point as well. One bad wave that comes through and you have a big sort of slap and slop. Uh, and that'll be enough to eject you out the back. Um, there's, there's lots of sort of talk about do we sort of head up into waves, do we bear <coughs> away? Um, and then, of course, that has to be contrasted with if you've got a bad technique, you're using the rudder, which is a brake. Um, so it's, it's finding a balance. You probably don't want, I would suggest, a lot too aggressive with your turning. Um, but it's only where the waves are reasonably well spread out and are quite short and sharp. Similar to how we had. You know, yesterday, I think if you do see a bad wave, pinching up into it is probably a, a, a good idea. Why do we do that? If you imagine that you stood on a beach and you've got waves crashing in around your waist, you stood there. Each time a wave comes in, it tries to knock you backwards. 
That's exactly what a wave is doing, is it's coming downwind. The wave is progressively coming downwind. Do you sail it over that wave? The wave comes under the boat and tries to push the boat backwards. As the next one comes in, the next wave comes in and pushes you backwards. So what you want to do is get over that lump of water as fast as possible. Just let the water pass underneath you as quick as you can. So by heading up and going over it, just pass over to the other side of the wave as fast as possible. Where I find it gets really difficult in the last wave is the bearing away afterwards. The actual head up is quite easy. You don't need to use much rudder in the boat. You just naturally go up and over the wave, and that's quite easy. What you've got to be concentrating on is, is to bear away and keep yourself so you're not pinching all the time. Because if you go over the wave nicely, and then don't do that bear away, you won't have sufficient speed to get over the next wave. Uh, and that's all about keeping the boat flat if you can. The more you heal, the more you're using your rudder to bear away. And so it always comes back to that, about keeping it flat. And the other thing that's really critical in that first 30 seconds is concentration. And that, that's something that, that is quite difficult because there's so much going on. There's, you've had all this sort of signals coming in that you've been sort of trying to input uh, from the start. You've got folks all around you, you're thinking wind shifts, you're thinking waves. And then just keeping that mental concentration on boat speed and, and keeping it flat and trying to eliminate everything else is really crucial. So what, what, what can we eliminate at stage? I think eliminate wind shifts to start with. You, you've not really got an opportunity, you've barely got an opportunity to attack at if you start within the first 30 seconds. So I would suggest don't worry about wind shifts at all in that, in that first period. Um, use your crew as well. If you come off the start line and your kicker's not quite on right, work as a team and, and ask your crew to put the kicker on or, or adjust the boat so that you can still stay focused on the next waves that are coming and keeping the boat flat. I think that's really critical. The, the, the sort of things that the crew can be doing is they can be sort of looking over their back shoulder, looking to see if you've got any tapping opportunities and telling you. I mean, it might be, carry on, Steve, with no tapping opportunities, don't worry about it. And that's actually quite useful information because then you can eliminate that. I'm not going to worry about whether I can tap or not, I'm just going to sail as fast as I can. It's useful information. Um, the other thing that the crew could be doing quite useful as well is looking to see if there's any boats coming across on port that started earlier after the gate being used, trying to wing it to come across. Yesterday, Steve decided it quite successfully. But just having a crew focusing on boats coming across means it's something else that you can eliminate and concentrate on the boats and, and keeping it going. So that's the, the, the first 30 seconds is about a good start. If you've not had such a good start, position slightly different. No matter how hard you hike and how flat you keep the boat, you're probably going to be in dirty air from the boats to lower down to window. Um, and you probably want to start thinking about bailing out and, and doing attack. Um, the longer you leave it, the more sort of you're going to fall behind. So you, you want to start digging fairly early. But similarly, you don't want to panic. You've got enough championships, you've got a good hour's race, possibly longer if you're long races. So bailing out too soon, as I've done I've done many a time, you can actually make things a lot worse if you just attack into some of this dirty air. So just pause, get your concentration back, think it's not the end of the world, find the next lane to tap in and then go for it. And then you've got every chance of getting back in. And you, you, what you really do straight away at that stage is move to um, sort of 30 seconds into the race compared to if you've had a good start. You, you're moving on to that next phase of the beat um, straight away.